that have breath, sing that. Everything that have breath.
worship you, Lord. We worship you because you are Lord and King. Oh, we magnify you. feet tonight and praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Let me hear you sing. Everybody, come on and help me say praise. Everybody, all of God's children, sing it one more time. Praise. Come on and lift up those hands. Everybody, That's what we've come to do, oh, is pray to the Lord. Everybody, come on, children, it's time to pray the Lord. Come on and praise the Lord tonight. Notice the scripture doesn't say, let everyone who has breath, but let everything that hath breath. Praise the Lord. That's everything. <laughs> everything is breathing in one way or another, it has pores in its essence. Not always nostrils or mouth, or the same uh, pores you find in somebody's face, but everything has skin, everything has energy, everything is conscious. Even consciousness is conscious. And uh, so we believe that everything praises the Lord, praises creation, praises Creator. And that's what we're doing tonight. We're creating these programs so that you could feel the energy and feel the anointing. Welcome to Azusa, reminding the saints of the hope. I'm Carlton Pearson. We open up with the song that the great Gary Oliver wrote and uh, led us in Azusa. Powerful song, sang it all over the world. People love this song, and I hope you remembered it as you heard it, some of you probably for the first time. Welcome to a ministry of, min of music and a ministry of mind, ministry of psychology or psyche, trying to raise your spirits, raise your consciousness, help you feel better about yourself in the midst of all that we're facing in this country, which is huge, huge change. You may resent it, but I'm saying to you, don't resist it because it is a, it would be a course in futility. The universe itself has decided to correct itself and to change. And so all these things are happening all over the world. A lot of it right here in America. These are some powerful prophetic times and critical and pivotal shifts in the way that we function as a nation. This is all good because it's all God. Feel that throughout tonight's program. We go down to Andre Crouch. Uh, I heard this song live, not live, but on, on the album that it came out in 19, I think it was in the 70s. There's nobody else like you. We sang this song all over the country. One of our favorites, my singing group, Helen and, and uh, Marilinda and uh, Sue, and uh, then later Brenda and Tommy Todd, all were with us, Mary Harris. We all traveled and sang all over the country. But this was one of our favorites. There's nobody else like Jesus is what he's saying. Christian music, Christ consciousness, focuses on Jesus, the person and the savior, or the salve the healing ointment that a consciousness of Christ brings to your being. It's all about healing, restructuring, encouraging, reinforcing. So we want you to feel the healing, feel the reinforcement and the encouragement tonight. Andre, the one and only, he's in heaven now. We just lost him a few years ago, but his music still lives and lives strong. Here we are, Andre Crouch, Sandra Crouch, uh, the disciples of Christ and all of us at Azusa having a great time. There's nobody else like you.
There's nobody else like you. Wave your hand if you believe that. Nobody else like you. Not my mother, not my father, not my sister, not my brother. Nobody else will do. That's why. In hard times, you've been my friend. You stood by me to the end. When all others cease to be, Lord, I look around and you're right there with me. Whenever I'm in trouble, Lord, you're there. Lord, you're there. Always there. Always there. When I felt like dying, oh Lord, you can, Lord, you can. always can. Always Whenever I call you, Lord, you answer always. You answer my, you answer my plea. plea. Hallelujah. 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 There is nobody. There's nobody. From above, just to show the Father love. Mm, that's why. For the rest of my days, I'm gonna praise Nobody else like you. Cause there's nobody like you. No one else. No one else will do. There's nobody else like you. No. Mm, Lord, I wanna tell you. Lord, you've really been good to me. Yes, you have. You've really been good to me. And I love your name, Jesus. Jesus. Lord, you've been so very good to me. And that's why I'm going to praise you. I love you. There's nobody else like you. I can search the whole world. Get fine. Like nobody, nobody, nobody. That's why I love you. Oh, I don't know that nobody, nobody else like you. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Play Ricky. Wasn't that great? That was just a great song. One of the favorite albums that I've ever heard. Uh, uh, my favorite is just Andre's, just Andre singing solos. 
songs that he wrote and that you don't hear him sing very often. And the last one with Amen, we'll play that for you soon with Rob Marvin Wine and singing it, one of the great songs of, of uh, Andre's life and his legacy as well. Tonight is really unique because we've talked about Andre and Sandra's music going all over the world. We have a group that we're gonna present to you uh, that's called Korean Soul. These are young men that learn how to sing The Blood Will Never Lose Its Power, one of Andre's, uh, the, it's the first song he actually ever wrote after he, he was anointed with oil by his dad and started playing the keyboards. This is the first song he wrote. It's the best, well, the most well-known song that he wrote on the planet all the way over into Korea. These guys really do this song well. They're doing the soul, the runs, the ripples. I call them vocal acrobatics, and they do it well. And you'll, it just, it blessed us to know that this style and this song uh, about the blood of Jesus would be prominent enough to be heard and sung by Koreans. This is powerful.
this song uh, is one of my favorites. I've sang it all across the country and the world, as have many, many other people. It's one of the favorite uh, recent songs in contemporary style, because um, it's not ancient, but it really touched the charismatic movement throughout, throughout that's the, there's the classical, classical Pentecostal movement, that's what our roots are, it goes back to Azusa. Some is of God, a lot of the Church of God, um, Pentecostal churches all come out of that root. Then the charismatic, char charisma is the Greek word for gift. Charisma, charis is the Greek word for grace. So charisma is gracious gifts or gifts of grace, or you're graced with gifts. And so that whole movement was powerful. You had suddenly spirit-filled Methodists and spirit-filled tongue-talking Baptists and spirit-filled Catholics, over 50 million in the Catholic Church. Pentecost grew fast in that movement. It is the fasting expression, fastest growing expression of Christianity on the planet, Pentecostalism, especially in foreign countries. So the revival sort of slowed down over here, but it's big in other parts of the world. This is one of the favorite songs of it. And I'm singing it at Higher D in 1992. This is a Sunday night service. And we all, people came from all over the city, different churches to our Sunday night services, because they were electrifying. And you'll be blessed as the choir sings and I sing and you feel the energy in the room. This is holy ground. As I walked through the doors, I felt God's presence. And I knew this was a place where love abounds for this is the temple Jehovah God abides here yes and we're standing in God's presence on holy ground and we are standing on a holy ground And I know that there are angels all around us So let us pray Say hallelujah. Come on, say it again. Hallelujah to Jesus. Lift those hands up and wave at him one more time, everybody. Ooh. Well, in God's presence, there is joy beyond all measure. And on his feet, peace of mind. Can still be found. So if you have a need, I know Christ is the answer. So just reach out and touch him, for we are standing up on a holy ground. Jesus! 
in God's presence. Don't you know we are standing in God's presence? We are standing in His presence on a holy, on holy ground. This is holy ground, holy ground. Oh yes. Come on, love him, everybody. Come on, love the Lord, everybody, with all of your heart. Worship him in the beauty of holiness. Hallelujah, Jesus. What people don't understand, and I prosecuted these cases, dead people vote all the time. Madam Speaker, you have heard me say on occasion that the right to vote is precious, almost sacred. In a democratic society, it is the most powerful, non-violent instrument or tool that we have. Many people marched, protested for the right to vote. Some gave a little blood, others gave their very lives. The Madam Speaker, you have heard me tell the story before, and you know our work is not finished. It makes me sad. It makes me feel like crying when people are denied the right to vote. So I ask you, if not us, then who? If not now, then when? Let's save our nation and redeem time has expired. the soul of America. Thank you very much. We've all heard the story about David and Goliath. Yolanda Adams wrote a song and sings a song titled, The Battle is the Lord's, taken from 1 Samuel 17, 47, when Samuel the prophet was telling Israel that uh, they didn't need to be afraid of the Palestinians, that's the Palestinians, or the Pal Philistines, I should say. It was er earlier that we call those the Palestinians from Philistines. We think there is a connection there. Uh, Goliath stood something like 11 and a half feet tall, maybe 12. And so he was a giant in those days, and he was known throughout the land as being able to be the big bully. And David took him on, <laughs> and uh, just with a little slingshot and a stone. He had five. Uh, or used to say that's because Goliath had four more brothers. <laughs> but Samuel just needed that one stone. When the battle is the Lord's, you just need one stone, even if that. You do what you can, God will do what you can't. The battle is the Lord's. That doesn't mean you sit around and do nothing. You pray, you fast, you pray, uh, worship, you sing, you request, you supplicate. But the battle really ultimately belongs to God. With all that's happening again in our country, in our culture, in the character of our country, and the consciousness of the nation, we must remember those who have faith in what, however God appears to you as something uh, that meets your understanding or your interest, that God is in charge, ultimately. And that battle belongs to that God. So relinquish, relax, as we used to say, let go and let God. The battle is the Lord's. The one and only Yolanda Adams, we love her like she's flesh and blood, and she is very powerful. This is Azusa, 1994. Jesus can't feel there is no hurt that he cannot heal all And perfect way, no matter what you're going through, remember God is using you for the battle.
remember that all things just they were. They work according to the master's holy and perfect and timely will. No, oh, no matter what, no matter what you're going through. I think I've told you before on these programs that I was introduced to the wine and conceptually by Andre Crouch. We were in LA, I think I was at their house, we were talking and laughing, and he said, man, have you ever heard of the wine ins? I said, no. He said, they're in Detroit. I met this group and they are, you're talking about holy. <laughs> he said, you think we're holy. They're the straightest holiness folks you've ever met in your life. I mean, they were really, really strict holiness people. And people like, uh, uh, CC is pretty, pretty strict this day. That's the way they were brought up. Very similar to the Church of God in Christ. But uh, I've met them, you know, Andre said that probably 40 years ago, and I met them 35 or so years ago. I've loved them ever since. And um, I didn't even know Marvin could preach. I only knew him to sing. Penny Hollenbeck, who was working for me as executive assistant at the time, whom I met through Carmen's mother, we, we called her Mama Nance, uh, she hired her, brought her here in the middle of the winter. I was standing in this big 6,000 square foot home. She had to stay in the garage apartment on the other side of it and uh, didn't have much money to offer at the time. But she came and worked for us, one of the best executive assistants I've ever had. She's the one that had me to write Jim Baker when he got in trouble. Get, got me the, I wanted to reach out to him. She got the address for me and encouraged me to write him and invite him to speak at Azusa. This man invited me to preach. This convention, while I was in prison, that's a valley walker. You can have your mountaintop friends. I'll take a valley walker that will go with me to the valley of the shadow of death. A friend that loveth at all times. People act like I did that. I, I did in, initiate it, but she gave me the idea. She also told me that, that, that uh, Marvin could preach, and I, I went up there to hear him preach and invited him to come to Azusa, to my church, and put him on the church program first. Later on, Azusa, the world didn't know he could preach. They wouldn't understand. 
because it's the righteous thing. It's an amazing speaker. So I have to say that sentiment sentimentally because of my love for the Winans. Uh, their entire family. Ron is in heaven. Um, my pops is gone, and Mama's still here, and the kids. But it's all good. Anyway, uh, BB wrote the song "Your Arms of Love." Marvin was preaching at Azusa in 1993, and BB came in. The family's really close. They always support each other. So BB came in, and I think Twinkie came in that weekend, and we just had a great service. But BB sang this powerful song that he wrote. He, he's really good with ballads. He's a worshiper. His deep feelings for Christ and loves the Lord. And when he writes and sings, you just feel this whining anointing. The whining is really have it. This will bless you tonight. We're all resting and relaxing in the arms of God's unconditional love, radically inclusive love. His mercy endures forever and nothing can separate us from God's love. Here you go. You whining? Sing it. Lord, if you will, and if you can, dismiss the facts, and no rapper man, and Just hold me in your arms, your arms of love. Cause you know the truth. And I've been taught the way. I don't have right to come tonight and say but Lord please just hold me in your arms your arms of love cause your of love relieves the pain your arms of love I need once again so if you will And take hold of my, my hand And please Just hold me in your arms Your arms of love Cause your arms of, of love yeah. Savior can. Yes, he knows your faults, but somehow he understands. And tonight, Oh, it's, it's
it's when nothing else could help. Oh, his, his love, hey, it lifted me. I said it's when nothing Just let him hold you in his arm. No matter what you've done, he'll hold you in his arm. Yes, he wants, wants to hold you in his, his arms, his arms of love. I have some sad news, more sad for me maybe than you. I knew her personally and she was one of the most um, warm and encouraging new thought people I met. Her name is Barbara King, Dr. Barbara King, whom we consecrated to the bishopric several years ago. She's the first new thought bishop because new thought don't normally give that title, reverend you'll hear and pastor. But uh, we made her a bishop because I felt she had apostolic anointing on her. She's been in this, she's, she used to hang around with um, uh, Maya Angelou and even Oprah and Oprah's mother and Cicely Tyson, they get together once a year in some houses. This woman is, was six, seven or something like that, ridiculously tall, embarrassingly tall, and she never let it stop her. People were rude, some of the things they said about her, the names they called her, they would gawk at her. And she would hold herself with such dignity and such class, always dressed elegantly. She was youthful up until her 90th birthday, and I was at her 90th birthday just a couple of months ago in Atlanta. She fell asleep quietly uh, this past Sunday. They were letting her out, her kidneys had begun to fail, and um, she had congestive heart failure and has wrestled with that, but she's lived, outlived mostly all of her friends. She ate good, she got a lot of cleansing and detoxing, and she would go and fast and pray on the West Coast and um, uh, do a lot of anti-aging things. She was healthy in spirit, healthy in mind, and pretty healthy in body till this last few weeks. She had a couple of trips to the, to the hospital, but she founded uh, the Truth Center there, International in Atlanta. And it was one of the largest New Thought churches in the country. Her mentor was the late Johnny Coleman, whom I was the interim senior minister with there in, in Chicago, Christ Universal Temple. And we called on her to guide us through that. She was my friend. When I entered New Thought, I met her at the Trumpet Awards. She was, uh, I was receiving an award and she was receiving one too, or giving the award. And I remember looking at her, fascinated with her, sitting on this, on the platform. She had this little, little twinkle in her eye. She looked at me and winked her eye, gave me the sweetest welcoming smile, and then started pouring into me. And she knew my story, she understands Pentecost. She actually spoke in tongues. She would quite quicken and get happy. She was one of the rare New Thought people. She was known all over the world, in London, China, Asia, the World Parliament of Religions. I was wishing with her last year, I saw her there. So she's very special to me. Jack Bomar is another bishop at New Thought, who she choose has selected as her successor there in Atlanta. And he used to come to us, she introduced me to him when he lived in, in uh, Chicago, went to Chicago Theological Seminary. She called me, when my son's coming through, I want you to use him. And I was pastoring that church. He came in and started helping me uh, clerically in the office and organized myself. And um, he's an amazing man. Every church, most of them are unity churches that he's ever gone to. He leaves it a better church, a better place. And he's blessed uh, uh, Truth Center there in Atlanta and is working with the mother church. I introduced him to the Ikes. <laughs> I called her the Queen Mother Ike. Um, and her son, Xavier, who was a bishop. And, 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 and all because of, of uh, Barbara King introducing me to Jack, I introduced him to the, to the uh, 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 Ikes, Ike encoders, and now he pastors the mother church 
in Beaufort, South Carolina. He's in Atlanta as we speak, making arrangements for this beloved sainted woman of God, whom we love so very dearly. And Clarice was with me there, and we've been friends for years, and she played, uh, almost every time I went to uh, Truth, she would come and play, and she and the bishop were very close friends. They would have lunch together, they talked. We were all just with her a couple of months ago in Atlanta for her 90th birthday. She looked good and she, almost, she said I almost wore shorts tonight and she would have. She had a cute little pant suit on. We were all in white. Zonoma Clayton was there, also 90 years old, from Muskogee, Oklahoma, a precious woman and a dear friend. Um, she's in charge and owns the Trump Awards, Trumpet Awards, and that's where I met uh, Barbara King. So our hearts are sad. We know she's transitioned to her next dimension, her next self-expression and experience of the soul in eternity, uh, but she'll be greatly, greatly, greatly missed. And Clarice is playing the song, Abide With Me, but this is her in the cathedral. So many of you got excited about her music last week and ordered the downloads. Thank you for that. And we're going to bless her because she is in her 80s. Clarice is 82, I think, and has a little arthritis, but she keeps playing, keeps singing. She just called me today. She's precious to me. So those of you who gave $25 or more and indicated, put your email address on that we sent you, may, we're sending you uh, the downloads. You can actually have uh, this whole CD of Clarice playing all these beautiful songs, both secular and sacred songs. And uh, nobody plays it like her. It's just a concert. DE, her son, is introducing and emceeing and ministering on it. It'll really bless you. A great meditation. Uh, CD and DVD for you. But let's think about Barbara King. Uh, we consecrated as a bishop. She, Michael Beckwith, was the second, and Jack Bomar was the third New Thought bishops. And so this is very significant. She's one of the great apostles of the New Thought movement. We worked in it feverishly for over 60 years, and now she's at rest and reward. God bless you. We're going to miss you. We're more than you than uh, we could have ever expressed to you on earth. Barbara King, you're a queen. This song, Abide With Me, is Clarice Polk's tribute to Bishop Dr. Barbara King. She played it specifically for her. Barbara King loves the music, loves Clarice's uh, piano playing. Nobody liked them. They were great friends, and I'm blessed to have known them and to know them as my dear friends. This is Clarice Polk playing Abide With Me in honor, a tribute to the late, great, Dr. Bishop Barbara King.
Barbara King built a school, built a church, built a community, served the Atlanta area. People like Dick Gregory knew and loved her. Les Brown was one of, one of her protégés. He actually came by at the uh, birthday party uh, there in Atlanta, drove in an open air. We all had masks on, but he was waving and saying wonderful things about her. And uh, she, uh, he was introduced to the world, larger world, when, when uh, some people came to Barbara King's church and he spoke and they loved him and helped launch his powerful public speaking ministry, positive thinking, possibility thinking ministry. So this lady is great. And we're all missing loved ones because at this stage, I'm 67, you, every day or so, you're gonna get a call that somebody's made their transmission, uh, transition. We're losing so many, we don't really lose them, we just miss them because they're gone physically, but they're in our memories and in our memories because we nurture those precious memories of these precious saintly people. And uh, Barbara was really that. We must live, we must die. We must live until we die. And most of us believe that we live again. Blessed are the dead who die in the Lord. Henceforth now and forevermore, saith the Lord, they rest from their labor, but their works follow them. The, the, the toil is over, but the task remains. And I believe they do something on the other side. As scripture says, Jesus is sitting at the right hand of the throne of God, making intercession. So he's not just walking around heaven all day, he's actually interceding according to scripture. So we believe that they're active and that she'll be very active. She was active up unto the very day that she died or made her transition. So I pray for you that you will not fear death and that you will not fear life, that you will fear nothing, that your heart will be supernaturally emptied of all fear and then filled up with the God kind of faith, not just faith in God, but the faith of God for your own rescue, for your own preservation, for your own deliverance, for your own healing, for the wholeness, for the help. Feel encouraged, feel reinforced, feel literally touched by God. Abide with me. He said, I'll never leave you. Jesus did, I'll never forsake you. Lo, I'm with you always, even to the end of the age. And we are at an end of an age and he's with us. Know that and feel it as you remember your loved ones. God bless you. We'll see you again next week or next time. I love you. Our best is yet to come. Let me hear from you this week, hopefully tonight. Good night. They're the names you've grown to love. They're the ministries you can't imagine being without. They've preached to millions all over the world. And it all began right here. This is Azusa. The next great move of the Holy Spirit would be among black people. Just said, get ready, 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 get ready. Praise him, praise him. We're too pretty to praise God. why I'm traveling around the world is because I came here in 1992 and I cannot forget the bridge that brought me over. Shut up, bro.